why do we bother about Microsoft Intune? Why, why don't we just use Config Manager or why do we use something else? Well, it turns out that these two platforms are becoming more or less of a standard in the industry on how to do systems management. And it kind of helps that they are developed by the same organization who also, also developed the operating system. They happen to be managing, in this case, Windows 10 and Windows 11. This one is useful. Uh, I got tired of making sure that apps was configured for foreground traffic. <laughs> so I wrote a script that looks through them all and flips them into foreground. So uh, uh, I'll share this one as well. But the, 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 the performance is just yes, uh, so much better. Oh, it's up there as well. So it will actually be on the same link as you got there. So you have all those scripts in the same location. That should do it. Any of the Is members there... of this group will then be able to come into this portal, request um, request that they be elevated to this access for some amount of time. And again, you can configure this however works for your organization. And that would allow them to be um, an administrator on all of your Azure AD join devices for a limited amount of time. So again, this is really neat when you want to um, have that just-in-time administrator experience and you want to have the audit trail that this particular administrator came in, requested that elevated access and Azure AD I wanted to it. highlight a tool from Mickey Carlson, fellow Swede who now living abroad, but he put together a tool that allow you to basically copy anything in Intune. Call it Intune Management. The PowerShell script. Council of the batch files will start that PowerShell script. I can show you what it looks like. It's just PowerShell starting a script. There is a console option, it gives us some logging. So I'm actually going to start with that one. Once I'm signed into a tenant, which I am, I will now see everything in that tenant. So I can go down and, and check my, uh, uh, whatever I have, whatever type of settings I have. For example, we did scripts uh, last week. It will show me the scripts that I have available here. And I can pick one of these and I can compare and export and, and uh, uh, even view the script from here or the settings from it. You still have to decode it if you want to see the content, but that's pretty good. Device configuration. This is where I have my profiles. Here we'll see uh, some additional information at least, where we can see if we have any devices that have errors or are pending install, uh, or if they were successful. Again, you can... Um, change the status to filter this a little bit and you can export these reports. Now, if you really want to get some additional data in Intune, we need to look to we can uh, look at, say for example, actions initiated by a specific user over the last 30 days. In this case, I'm just going to check my, my admin account. Um, so we'll see a lot of uh, you know, playing around with new things, prepping for this course, and, and even doing things that we've been doing throughout our modules here. Here we can actually see if there are uh, any failures when we try to add a device. Uh, looks like I got some results back, but it would be helpful to know why. So using that same query, um, I can just select some of the information out. And we can see for a lot of these devices, um, it already had an object joined into Azure AD. Uh, so that may be something Every that I need to look into. Every time you run something on a client, 
uh, Intune makes a note of it in different locations in the registry. And by wiping them and restarting the IME service, you can usually convince it to run again fairly quickly. Mm -hmm.